poor in the south south countries, especially in Africa. And no one is subjected to American influences. American movies, American music, American literature, but being south, global south. To such an extent that it separates indigenous development in these areas. My paper was wrong. This is not, not on that case. The whole issue of cultural imperialism is not very bad. Good old South is not like a hotelic needle where you just simply pump something and then expect people to accept it. Good old South is a place where people think, they rationalize it, they accept domesticate and they remove it in their own image. A very good example is not the world, the Nigerian Film Industry. The Nigerian Film Industry is now an African power in terms of media messaging because it is for colonial. It deals with African situation, African environments, and therefore it's sub it supplanted, it's removed away the American influence. So yes, American films are still popular, American music is still popular, but now we're talking about African film, African music. So the whole of my data tend to focus attention on these uh, shifts. The age of media growth in the 30 years have forced us to rethink this uh, cultural theory. So instead of a one way flow, we now have multiple flows from Nigeria, northern world, goes up to East Africa. East Africa countries like uh, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, South Africa were also affected by Northern World Film Industry. In West Africa, countries like uh, Sierra Leone, uh, Ghana, uh, Gambia are also affected by the Nigerian film industry. So nobody is talking about Hollywood anymore. We're talking about African edges and flows. But the main data was about how Asian influences left over and came to Africa, particularly India. Indian influences in the northern Nigeria were very, very significant. To such an extent that we have a list of over 1,000 Indian films that have been reworked at the northern level as local films. And the reason for all this was congruency. The house of, the house of society is Islamic. Indian society is not Islamic, it's Hindu. But they share commonalities with, with Islam in terms of obedience to parents, a respect for culture and tradition, uh, particularly the mother. Everybody loves the mother and, and you respect the mother. But most importantly, the dressing, Indian dresses, they, they dress in a way that, that create a code for the house of people. Women wear long uh, sari, they have a lot of bangles on their, on their hand, uh, they are very shy and they warm, they don't look at you right in the eye. These are the qualities of a woman that the typical house of woman. So when these qualities were expressed in film, they just simply find it easy to, to adopt it. They don't accept American films because they're too violent. They're too sexual. They're too about drugs and violence and things. But they accept uh, Indian films because Indian films are closer in congruency to their cultural universe, to something that they, that they look at. But the beauty of it is, these films from India were not deliberately imported by India. They were, they were not exported by India. They were imported by local people. So you, you have this concept of soft power. Hard power is when you come with guns and take over. Soft power is when you persuade people to allow them to take over. That's exactly what is happening uh, in this particular scenario. <coughs> so cultural resonance across the country is kind of similar to cultural resonance, even if separated by geographical distance. Taiwanese soap operas were popular in the Philippines. Cultural proximity and ability is also excellent for Korean media export to China and Japan. And yet by 2021, Korean film culture has become transnational across the world. This was reflected by the massive success of Squid Game on Netflix. This was a Korean TV show film with only one season of nine episodes that came duly successful internationally in October 2021. And this is the reason for this success. The essence of the show is its commentary on social injustice, class division and financial inequality, and even gender-related issues. These social injustice issues are not only Korea, the whole world is struggling on them. These elements make the show is not strongly outside of Korea as well. There's a 
survival gave an answer of the series was he captured the attention of people who killed the man. So this is not about Korea, it's not about race, it's not about religion. It's about a human condition. And that human condition is universal. And that is why there is a resonance. The human spirit was completely developed in order to walk this. The same thing with the medical care of others that have also created a lot of uh, romantic relationships in the global south. And I all the traditional values of the global south is the main what it is. I bet them TV shows the what they are. We like them for the violence, for the entertainment, but they don't know what they are. They don't provide a template. Neither do they describe what is happening in the global south. Now, how's the language becomes critical in this rationalization because <coughs> it's the most widely spread African language. It has actually influenced beyond native religion. Uh, being spoken in the German Republic, Cameroon, Togo, Benin, Ghana, the Bons, the Central African Republic, the Bons, and the part of the Burkina Faso. The language itself is like Arabic. A lot of the vocabulary of the words that are used in Hausa languages, the product of Arabic, as much as 40% of the Hausa language vocabulary is based in Arabic. Not only with contact with Arabs, but also because of contact with Islam, the Quran. And the Hausa trading network also means that Hausa have evolved a system of domesticated practices and material culture of other people they come in contact with. Uh, <coughs> clothing, building styles, food items, and so on and so forth. This turban is borrowed from Agadez uh, in the Indian Republic. And uh, I feel comfortable wearing it. I, I don't know how to tie it over it in my head. Otherwise, I would have been carrying it like a Tory. So we have borrowed this into such an extent that we know a loss of identity because of congruency, because of commonality. Uh, Cultures. Uh, then the British came along and they encouraged uh, a literature and about <coughs> they encouraged uh, writing in, in, in about uh, 1929 books were produced. But what the British did was they encouraged translation, not indigenous writing. They encouraged translation of already existing literature. This is an example from Arabic. Muhammad al Haidi was <coughs> the, 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 was uh, translated into one other dialect of local house language. Even the, the artwork was created in order to reflect the original uh, work. Uh, there are other places that, that are also sources of inspiration. For instance, uh, Ilya of Monument from Russia was also converted at the local level as uh, Ilya Kamiki. And this eastern culture, looking toward the east rather than toward the west, was what, uh, what, what informs uh, how the Indian films. Mother India, Rani Urmati, the one in the center is. One of the most popular Indian films in, in Northern Nigeria, I'm sure they and others follow. Even the new ones that are produced in, in uh, new new Hollywood, uh, new Hollywood, uh, Kurdish, Tiger and Hai, and Pathan. These films become accessible to the local houses due to their cultural resonance and emotional drama, which is easily related to the traditional house Indian societies that in the film. Radio stations took to play the Hindi film music, and soon enough children were reciting in that particular. But not only that, the Indian film culture from Southeast Asia is also reflected in traditional wedding ceremonies. The, left, the, the image on the left is a video of a man who spent seven years in India, and when he got back to Nigeria and wanted to get married, he decided to do an Indian wedding. So he, he married in a typical Indian costume, an Indian wedding. And I use that picture in order to show the, the, the similarities in the practice. So this is somebody in the middle of Africa, somebody who is a Muslim, and somebody who is an African. And yet, is inspired by Asian culture, Indian culture, of all the singing, dancing, and hands floating all over the place. Namaste in India. And more of these Asian bases from the Uh the, the Another thing is, when they pick up this media, uh, they, they just copy exactly the way the films were produced. Because I have only 20 minutes, I'm not playing it. However, it's there on, on the desktop. Anybody who's interested uh, can easily pick it up. But like I said, 12 minutes is not enough for me to do all this. Now, a, a final aspect of it was when you get a situation where you have to translate Hindi language into the local African language, the African decide to learn the Hindi language and therefore speak the Hindi the language. So now they speak it very closely based on the film that they, they watch. But then they also came up with another thing, uh, which is called House India, that is Indian House, and that is the bit of Indian films. They removed the dialogue, translated the dialogue into English, and then they converted it into House, and then put it back into the films, and then they put a whole, a whole new genre of dubbing. 
So soleil, which was in Hindi, was converted into a Hausa language. So you see a, an actor saying that, uh, talking in Hausa language. So they don't have to do any, any subtitle uh, anymore. And they also created their own uh, language uh, translation, because they translate some of the aspects, but it's a little bit too heavy for this. And these are all the ways in which they keep, they keep copying. So in, in my lecture, I look at the cultural and imperialism in theory. This is because this kind of imperialism from above, when I see imperialism from below, that the idea that African societies possibly absorb American influences has long been discarded. I also use that to develop a strategy for investigating international popular culture forms to suit the peculiarities of their societies or communities. This is exactly the template for reversing the whole concept of cultural imperialism. However, what we see is not a clear woman flow, but it is for flow, just as American selective influences are catalytic to new forms of popular culture in Africa. Asian influences are also very, very much subtle. Finally, from China, China in Africa. China is an important country for Muslims. The reason is because there is a prophetic tradition in Islam that is seek for knowledge, even if it is in China. So virtually all Muslims are aware of this. So China is seen as a compass of knowledge, where you can go and get knowledge, because it was very far away uh, from anywhere. So the Chinese relied on the importance of African markets, capital church in Venezuela in northern Africa. Principally among the Hausa due to the easy acquisition of the language. We have the huge market that has started to the West, North, and Central African region for centuries. While Chinese trading firms found easy niches in Nigerian markets, slower preferences have been made with regard to media exchanges. The most significant media ambassador for China is the Hausa language broadcast of China Radio International. Following up on the establishment of CRI in Western Africa, efforts were made by the Chinese to acquire proficiency in the Hausa language. In a fascinating counter flow of media, it was the house that was switching out to China rather than mandatory reaching out to the house. It would appear that the Chinese were happy with acquiring house cultural forms, perhaps to gain acceptance, rather than exporting Chinese language to the house. Of course, this might be due to the difficulties in mastering the non universal Chinese modern characters. Further, the sharp cultural differences between China and African social and public cultures do not allow for the intervention of media exchange. Nevertheless, efforts have been made to create a media cultural corridor that enhances mutual understanding and appreciation of each other's cultures and language. The CRI's film and television translation center translated the first Chinese television drama, The Glorious Years of Doctor in Law, into Kiswahili and broadcast it in Tanzania and Kenya and Georgia. It became an instant hit. The TV drama's French version was aired in Senegal in 2013. The popularity of this TV show became a favorite connector for Chinese and African politicians when they talk about mutual understanding and cultural commonalities between China and Africa. Perhaps the CRI's initiative to Chinese films in the 1960s and 70s enjoyed massive popularity at local cinemas across Africa. Talking about Bruce Lee and then much later Jet Li, uh, all these were popular and so we have a, little, a lot of kung fu clubs that are come up and everybody is ha 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 or something like that. So everybody's trying to pretend that they are. This film encouraged the establishment of hundreds of Kung Fu and Karate clubs throughout Nigeria, and regardless of religion or ethnicity. The number of Chinese national and various cities in the north of Nigeria have been increasing their visibility and engagement in local culture. Social media platforms have also helped to raise the visibility of Chinese engagement in Africa. YouTube, TikTok, Instagram are all awash with Chinese nationals dressed in house language and in house clothing singing house songs and conducting talk shows and interviews in the house language. It's not clear the extent of Chinese penetration into other Nigerian languages, but how to be the most widely spoken even in West Africa naturally becomes the first magnet for bonding with the locals and the Chinese are effective in considering these two and considering these two self correspondence and they go and work a lot of time. In 2017, Bayer was taken to the recognition of the contribution of Chinese to the Telotech economy awarded an honorary doctor of business administration to a local Chinese industrialist, Mr. Man Long Li, in recognition of his contribution to industrial growth and economic development in Kano State and Nigeria in general. This was the first time in the history of the universe that the national of any Asian country was so honored. The increasing number of Chinese in Kano, and there are about 7,000 of them, also attracted the attention of the Kano Emirates, which has been in continuous, continuous existence. 999. In April 2019, the area of Kano Turban, Mike Zhang, a resident Chinese businessman, 
they were killing in China account. That is the traditional representative of the Chinese economy. Again, this is the first time foreign nationalities accepted into the highly historical category of art. And this is Mr. Zhang, who is a uh, traditional place. So he has to wear a turban, he has to go to the palace, he has to sit down and uh, participate in almost all activities of the palace. Just like a typical traditional title holder uh, in Hausa. So he has been domesticated and accepted as a Hausa person. I very much doubt if he is coming back to China. The Hausa also participated in some of the big entries. The big entries are a video. During the big entries uh, in, in, in Kano, the traditional palace, these Chinese will have to wear the traditional dress, they have to wear the turbans, they have to ride horses, and then they have to go saluting. Now the salute, the, the Glen Street salute, means may you live long in the name of Allah, because there are five pillars of faith in Islam. So all these five pillars are clenched into the faith, and they are good. And I know they are not Muslims, but they, they play the part, and, and also clench their feet, and do it the area, and, and everybody else. The last video are Chinese young people, who pick up a normal uh, standard heat in House of Longwood and they were married to it in, in traditional House of Longwood. Thank you. 